Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Negative Consumption Externalities Part. We are learning in Public Finance, Chapter 5, Part 3. Let's get started. So in the previous part, we learned about negative production externalities. Negative consumption externalities is very similar to what we learned. If you haven't watched the previous part, Part 2, go ahead and watch it first because that this is not going to make too much sense unless you know the graphing tools. Okay, so let's talk about negative consumption externalities. It happens when an individual's consumption reduces the well-being of others who are not compensated by the individual. Okay, so example, for instance, a person at a restaurant is smoking cigarettes. So in the United States, in the restaurants, you cannot smoke cigarettes as of 1994. However, in some countries, people do smoke indoors, number one. Number two, even sometimes people smoke outside in the patio, which is allowed in most restaurants. It is quite disturbing to some people who don't smoke. So smoking has a negative effect on your enjoyment of the restaurant meal. You're eating your food, suddenly smoke and what if you actually have asthma and those kind of things? That's really going to ruin your dinner. All right. So consumption of a good cigarettes, for instance, reduces the well-being of somebody else. Let's say the marginal damage from somebody smoking is 40 cents per pack of cigarettes smoked. So this makes sense more in a patio area because it's open air in a patio. But somebody is smoking cigarettes, like if there's so many people, 20 people smoking, Right. Let's say your enjoyment went, uh, goes down. It went down by 40 cents. OK, so let's look at each party's incentives in the presence of negative consumption externality. All right. So price of cigarettes on the Y axis, quantity of cigarettes consumed in the X axis. So because this is not a production externality, supply will be equal to private marginal cost and it will also be equal to social marginal cost this part comes from the fact that social marginal cost being equal to supply and private marginal cost comes from the fact that there is no production externality demand will always be equal to private marginal benefit but it won't be equal to social marginal benefit why because there's negative consumption side externality so it's going to affect your demand curve private marginal benefit so the smoker sets private marginal benefit equals to private marginal cost to find his or her privately optimal quantity of cigarettes Q1. So these mini cigarettes are going to be consumed and this will be the price of cigarettes. OK, this yellow triangle is the surplus to smokers and the producers of cigarettes. OK, so this framework fails to capture the harm done to non-smokers, though. OK, so this is a marginal damage curve represents the non-smokers harm per pack of cigarettes. So this is me getting disturbed by somebody smoking around me while I'm trying to enjoy a very nice meal. OK, so what happens is that social marginal benefit, right? is not going to be equal to private marginal benefit. Private marginal benefit will be reduced by the amount of marginal damage. So social marginal benefit smoking will be private marginal benefit. This red curve is for the smokers enjoyment, but the social marginal benefit is going to be lower than that because not everybody enjoys smelling cigarettes. Okay, so this green, curve is the social marginal benefit curve it's the difference between private marginal benefit to smokers minus damage they're causing okay so what happens is that look at this you have a new socially optimal level so q1 is privately optimal level q2 is socially optimal level so q1 was what smokers chose but Q2 will be the social optimal level of smoking is going to be consuming Q2 levels of packs of cigarettes. And the price is supposed to be right here. It's going to be the intersection of social optimal always comes from social marginal cost, social marginal benefit. Don't forget. 
So the smoker consumes too many cigarettes from the society's point of view. This is socially optimal. This is the smoker's choice. So this is what it should be, socially optimal. Smokers are going to end up choosing a lot and paying a lot of money. Okay, so the red triangle between the social marginal cost and social marginal benefit curve, social marginal cost and social marginal benefit curve, and the difference between social optimal and private quantity will be dead weight loss from the private production of cigarettes of Q1 produce too much okay so again this is very similar to what we did in the negative production externalities everything we did is verbally explained here the smokers privately optimal quantity is determined by private marginal benefit demand curve and private marginal cost curve which is the supply curve this is going to yield q1 at price one here q1 at price one Q1 at price one. This is private solution. Smokers' consumption causes damage to other restaurant patterns. I would prefer marginal damage equal to zero. Okay, so this would yield zero cigarette smoking, which is perfect in my world. But this is not very fun for smokers. So the social marginal benefit accounts for, so underline, both the direct benefit to smoker, yay, and the indirect harm done to this MD is positive. Remember, marginal damage is positive. So social marginal benefit will include private marginal benefit, but it's reduced by the damage you're causing others with your actions. So the social optimal number of cigarettes is going to be Q2 lower than Q1, and P2 is the price level, which is a different price level. Let's see. So socially optimal price level will be lower and quantity of cigarettes consumed and sold will be lower. Okay, so we are going to find socially optimal level of output by social marginal cost, social marginal benefit. So in the socially optimal level, there's less smoking. Smokers are worse off. I'm not sad. And the other patrons are better off for trying to enjoy their meal. The surplus to the smokers or tobacco companies will fall. And we show the dead weight loss, which is dead weight loss is always the area between social marginal benefit and social marginal cost. And the difference, the area encompassing the area between the socially optimal level of quantity and also private level of output. So... As a result, harm to other restaurant patrons is reduced. The area under the marginal damage curve from socially optimal to private choice will be the reduction to the restaurant patrons. So I'm going to show you that in everything. So that's my marginal damage curve, right? So your Q2 was, let's say, here. So reduction... In the damage caused to the patrons, because, right, other non-smokers. Consumption went down from Q1 to Q2. So this much marginal damage has been avoided. This is this nice, cute little rectangle. Okay. And dead weight loss, we already described this, but... But from dead weight loss from Q1 is a triangle between social marginal cost, social marginal benefit from Q2. So note that social marginal cost is going to be equal to private marginal cost because there's absolutely no production externalities in this case. So let's talk about a real life example. This is the use of SUVs, which are sports utility vehicles. So use of SUVs create three sorts of externalities. Full disclosure, I do drive an SUV. Okay, guilty as charged, but let's see. Environmental externalities, I'm sorry, they consume a lot of gasoline, which is true, and it creates more pollution. Number two, wear and tear on roads, and SUV drivers do not bear the cost that result from their vehicles because the cost per gallon is actually the same for taxes, which finances our highways and safety externalities when SUVs are on 
accidents, the other drivers are often more severely injured. So these are the externalities of SUVs. I will see you in part four. In this part, in this next part, we're going to start talking about some positive stuff, positive externalities, consumption and production. I'll see you there. Bye, folks.